Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry. Hello and welcome to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. Folks, how many of you are aware of your breathing? Do you take it for granted? In moments when we're under pressure or in a panic, you probably told yourself to just breathe. You know, in theory, that it can control how we feel, but how many of us do we really understand the power of breath work? Today, I'm joined by breathing expert, peak performance coach, and host of BBC One Radio One's decompression session, Stuart Sandiman. Stuart's new book, Breathe In, Breathe Out, gives readers simple yet effective exercises that are guaranteed to charge you up, help you relax, and improve your performance. Stuart, a very big welcome to the show. How's it going? Uh, my pleasure to be here. It's um, yeah, it's going, going, going very well at the moment. You're over, in you're, swing. you're over in London. It's pretty hot over there, isn't it? It is it's hot and sticky. Yes, it is. Breathing is something that's, I know it's, it's really, really important with our listeners. They always uh, love episodes on breathing. We know it's very popular. Your own book was a Sunday Times bestseller. Uh, I want to start the chat not talking about breathing, though, but about Tiff. Can you tell me a little bit about her and why she is such a big part of why you wanted to understand breathing? Yeah. Um... So Tiff was my girlfriend who, uh, who sadly was diagnosed with terminal cancer and passed away. And she is a, such a huge part of my journey into this work because um, it was when she passed away and I was going through the grieving process um, that I found breath work. And it wasn't something I went searching for. It was, it was something I actually took my mum to a breathing class for Mother's Day. And... Uh, and it was it felt like in that in that first ever session a lot of the answers as we'd been searching for um over the last 18 months with tiff were kind of answered in terms of this powerful tool that we have on us the whole way called breathing that i probably wouldn't have listened to if somebody told me about breathing during that time um so tiff was yeah tiff was my girlfriend um and yeah it was i i guess through losing her to cancer and, and finding breathwork, it's kind of set me off on a, a brand new path. Before what I do now, I, I was a DJ and producer, so I was touring a lot and traveling a lot um, and playing music and playing festivals and, and very much in that creative space. But after she passed away, I'd, I, I was in a bad headspace, as you could probably imagine. So I, I needed some time out. And during that time out, I, I found breath work and it was like this tool that I never knew existed to really transform and, and transform me in a number of ways. It wasn't just the the grief that I was able to kind of, that weight of grief that I was able to integrate or, or work through and process. I realized that it was a bit like the onion layers. The reason that I was finding the grieving process so hard and challenging, and it's a challenging thing for most people, but it was actually due to my past and i soon found that breathing not only the things that you shared at the beginning um to kind of change how we feel and think in the moment but also to um unwind some of the conditioning that we have through our past experiences because that's all linked to how we're actually breathing and how we're holding our breath uh day to day and so you, yeah, and very... you had a really busy kind of obviously life in terms of DJ, touring, all of that. I think, you know, a lot of people who are listening in will, will often say, you know, oh, well, I'm too busy. Uh, I'm too busy to think about breathing or I'm think I'm too busy to, 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 to focus on it. Like, what would you say to those people? I would I would say that was me. Um, <laughs> 100%. Yeah, I was, I was always too busy to breathe. Before my music um, career kicked off, I actually worked in finance. So I was, I was working kind of a, a very very long hours um, in London and over in Asia. And before that, I was in a very much sporting um, career. I left school to, to pursue judo as a, as a career. Um, so I, when, when people come to me and say, oh, I'm too busy to do this, I, I, usually I say, first of all, if, if you're doing something 20,000 times a day, would you not want to know if you're doing it right? If you're doing any other task that many times, surely you'd like to know a bit more about that task, especially when it um, is linked to our energy levels, our stress levels, how we sleep, how we digest our foods, all these things that are so important day to day. So um, having a, a daily breathing practice really allows us to create a bit more flow, find a bit more 
um, steadiness to our day. And, and like I shared earlier, it's, it's, it's this amazing tool to let go of some of the tension we're holding on to from our past experiences. And you mentioned it there in terms of in sleep. And I know nasal breathing when sleeping is, you know, is a, is a, is a really important thing to you for, from, from seeing it in the book. Tell us a little bit more about that uh, and how to control that when we're unconscious and sleeping. Yeah, so, so our nose is designed for breathing. It's kind of what it's there um, to do. It's this filter for our lungs to make sure anything that shouldn't arrive at our lungs uh, doesn't get there. So it's this first line of defense. I often, in the book, Breathe In, Breathe Out, I call it the bouncer. Um, the bouncer for the club, which is the, the lungs, and, and it lets, only lets certain people in. And um, yeah, so it filters the air, gets the right moisture and temperature of air to our lungs for the best opportunity for absorption. Uh, it also flushes the air with nitric oxide, which kills off airborne bacteria and opens up our blood vessels to improve our circulation. And the size of our nostrils actually creates resistance to airflow. So we breathe a lot slower, we breathe a lot calmer. And if we calm our breath, our mind will follow. So generally speaking, if we're breathing through our nose throughout our day, we kind of get the the best air arriving at our lungs. We get this the speed at which we breathe is slower, so we generally feel calm. And um, we're just getting this nice absorption of, of oxygen. So everything's happen happening as it should. There are times that we might divert to mouth breathing um, in, a, in a state of emergency. So if we... Uh, for instance, stepped off the pavement onto a road and a car whipped around the corner, we'd gasp uh, through our mouth, <gasps> big gasp of air through our mouth as that kind of fear response to engage our muscles and get back to safety. So there's times that we will divert to our mouth breath, but it's ringing at our mouth breath, breath is part of that sympathetic drive, our, our stress response to move us into action. So when it comes to sleep, if we are breathing through our mouth when we sleep, we are we're not actually getting that nice, calm breath. Our, our um, whole system kind of goes out of whack. And it's one of, the, one of the most common forms of sleep apnea as well. The mouth gets very dry, our tongue falls back into our throat and, and it can cause a, a obstruction. So yeah, throughout our day, breathing through your nose as much as possible is, is really, really important. And that obviously that it should be done at nighttime as well. And for anyone, now, the, for anyone listening in who wants to try that, how how should they go about closing their mouth when they're when they're in bed, or or, or, or you know closing their mouth? Is there a particular way they should do it or try it, or is it or you know or yeah, what well, should they do? My my, um, my route to making sure you breathe through your nose when you sleep often gets kind of a raise of eyebrows at first because <laughs> uh, I, I recommend people taping their mouth up. I figured you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, and that's not to, uh, don't use duct tape or don't or use gaffer, yeah. tape or gaffer tape. Or, um, yeah, micropore medical tape you buy at most pharmacies, just one strip of your mouth. It's quite porous. Okay. And it, it, for guys, it doesn't rip off your stubble or hair or anything like that. And, and it actually pops open quite easily. I do recommend just to pop a piece on throughout the day because for some people p placing, um, closing down the mouth in that way can actually make us feel a bit anxious mm. because the, the airflow changes and we're maybe not getting this fast um, hit of air so quickly and, and it changes the chemistry of our body as well. So we actually start having a little bit more carbon dioxide in our, in our body, which can, for some people who are quite sensitive initially, that might create a little bit of anxiety which is the last thing that they're actually wanting. We want to try and improve that whole process. So what I recommend is is popping a piece of tape on if it's as short as a minute throughout the day and build that up. Build that up to, until you're comfortable with having a piece of tape over your mouth for about 20 minutes in the day. Now, if you can do 20 minutes in the day, you, you'll be fine to do the night taping. And the likelihood is that you'll wake up with the tape off. Um, for the first week anyway, you'll, you'll pop your mouth open or you'll rip it off in your sleep. Um, but it's it's the surefire way to, to really force yourself to use your nose to breathe and it retrains the body. And what's really nice about it and effective about it is you start to use your nose to breathe even more so throughout your day, especially once you've taped and you wake up in the morning with the mouth tape on, you'll find that throughout your day, you'll just feel the flow of air working a little bit better through your nose. 
Folks, you're listening to Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. I'm going to give you a little challenge for the remaining 10, 12 minutes of this episode. I want you to practice some nasal breathing. Consciously close your mouth and try and listen and just nasal breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. I've been doing it on and off for the last couple of minutes and I have to say I feel very relaxed. So I want you to try it and experience it and see how we go and listen in to all the other questions that we're going to go through. So uh, tell me, are there different types of breathers? That's the next question I have for you. Yeah, well, this is something I share um, quite early on in Breathe In, Breathe Out, because there are different types of breathers. Uh, it's like breathing archetypes that we fall into. And these are, in some ways, holding patterns. Patterns where we, we our breathing gets trapped in certain areas of our body. And the reason it gets trapped is, is fascinating. And this is why I, I really dived into this this mode of work because I found out what was happening with my breath and what that meant and it all started to make sense with my grieving process. So we have different types of breathers. You might have a chest breather who predominantly uses their intercostals, which is our secondary breathing muscles. And if we were just using our chest muscles, then our diaphragm isn't engaged. And it's the type of breathing, just to backtrack, we have these different types of breathing and in some ways, without contradicting myself, we're always breathing correctly in some way, but the signal from our mind to our breath might be wrong. So if that sounds quite abstract, what I mean is our breathing is, we, uh, we think our thoughts and it triggers our breathing. And our breathing um, ebbs and flows depending on what energy we require for that situation to get more air in and out quick enough um, to trigger our stress response. But what's quite interesting is our mind um, doesn't know the difference between the stressful thoughts or the stressful situation in the environment. It triggers the same breathing response. So if we are um, thinking worrisome thoughts, we're gonna be triggering our breath as if a tiger's in, our, in the room and it will cause us to breathe a little bit faster, probably with our chest um, so we can get that air flowing quick enough to get out of danger. So we find that people are get stuck in these breathing archetypes due to either thought patterns or habitual um, experiences, maybe the stressful job that is no, not just a stressful day, it becomes a stressful week, it becomes a stressful year. And our body is responding with a stressful breathing pattern because it thinks we're in danger, it's ringing the alarm bell. And we can get its, its muscle memory as well, so we can get stuck in these habits and patterns. And the other way that we get stuck in certain breathing patterns is we either consciously or unconsciously hold our breath. And we hold our breath to stop ourselves from feeling. Now, this is quite interesting. So if, I mean, some, some examples of this would be if you shouldn't find something funny. Well, we hold our breath <laughs> to stop the laughter. Or if we are feeling really angry, we might create tension in our body and we stop our breathing to stop the anger flowing. Or if we don't feel it's appropriate to burst out crying, well, the way that we stop the tears from flowing is by holding our breath. And if this becomes habitual or we, we're holding on because our mind thinks it's the safe thing to do, our breathing pattern changes and we get held into these holding patterns, um, these holding patterns that create these archetypes of breathing. And because our breathing pattern sends a signal to our brain to confirm what's happening in our environment um, as a measure of how we're feeling, then we get stuck in this way of thinking, feeling, and in some ways can even affect how we actually behave and interacting with the world, whether it's the stressful chest breather feeling anxious a lot of the time, or whether it's the, uh, the frozen breather where the, the posture's frozen and, it's, and their breathing's frozen, and they're, they're not actually feeling great the whole time because they're, they're stuck in this um, pattern of breathing. Um, or, or we might have people that are breathing too quickly and are breathing quite fast and, and wanting to get their, I often call it the breath grabber, they're breathing too quickly um, and they're wanting to get their point across. And, and all these patterns can be linked back to our experiences, the experiences that we've not allowed to fully integrate and we've held on. So that's what a lot of my book is about. A big chunk of it is about how do we use our breath to process emotions from our past so that we can live better and um, have a bit more flow in our life every day. 
And chatting about the impact of breathing on fitness levels, you know, it's another big part of the book and I was really fascinated to read about it, that, you know, it can be, it can make it an improvement to your fitness levels by learning how to breathe properly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the, the kind of the third part of the book is, is really about optimization. So that first part being around fixing, fixing the mechanics, understanding about the biochemistry, what that means. The second part, looking through this um, whole emotions, sim how do we work through simple emotions throughout our day and how do we integrate and process more um, challenging emotions, more complex emotions like grief. Um, this, this kind of sports context is, is slightly different again, but it's understanding that firstly, there's, there's two ways to energize our muscles and when, we're in, when they're engaged and there's this aerobic, which is using oxygen from the air around us or anaerobic which is using our own, um, our, our own sugar, our own glucose stores. Now, when we switch to anaerobic, it's not as effective as making energy and we create lactic acid, so our muscles get sore. So our breathing is a, a real direct correlation to our fitness levels. I mean, the, the two reasons that you may not be able to go that extra round or that extra mile would be either because you've got muscle pain, um, lactic acid is built up, which is to do with breathing, or you have um, a, a feeling of breathlessness, so much so that you can't carry on going, you're out of breath. Now, both of those are things that we can fine tune and improve um, quite dramatically by understanding both the mechanics of breathing, how are you breathing, is it, is it the most effective way um, for that given exercise or sport? And once we've looked at the mechanics and understood the mechanics of our breathing, how do we fine tune it? How do we um, optimize it and use as our breathing as a performance enhancement tool where we're actually looking at um, increasing red blood count, increasing EPO in the body, erythropoietin, which is um, something that will, is, is built in our bone marrows. And we can actually supercharge this by working through different exercises so that we can, um, in essence, optimize our, our machine for whatever sport it is that you, you engage in. And when I say sport, I mean, it sounds very technical, but it, this is the same um, this is the same science, whether I'm working with an Olympic athlete or a UFC fighter, to whether it's somebody's first ever charity 5K run or somebody that's just wanting to maybe start a fitness regime, but they're always so breathless that they can't actually um, get through much exercise or they're feeling tired walking up the stairs. Um, so so it's, it's really interesting when we start looking at that. It's both looking at the, the mechanics, but also looking at the biochemistry. Um, how do we reduce breathlessness through breathing and through better breathing? And how do we fine tune that whole process so that we can actually optimize getting oxygen from the air around us to where it needs to go? And even in terms of fat loss, breathing has a, a really important role in fat loss for people as well when they're trying to lose weight and lose body fat. Yeah, I, I threw, I, throughout the book, I've got these little fat boxes and that's one of them. And um, Yes, it has a, a part to play because when we do the calculations, the chemistry, it, it is, um, fat does leave the body as carbon dioxide. But that said, um, we need to have the energy deficit to make it happen. So we can't just breathe ourselves. <laughs> uh, we can't just use breath. Work Wouldn't to, it be to lovely use... if we could? I know. I know. People are like, oh, well, the minute, minute I talk about that stuff, people are like, oh, well, this is it. I can just sit in the sofa and breathe my way um, to my perfect body shape. We need that energy. Millions and millions and millions <laughs> of books globally, if that was the case. But no, obviously, look, it, it, it does help. And it's probably fair to say, too, that, you know, everything we've chatted about so far, whether it's for sport or whether it's for sleep, a lot of it comes back to that, that kind of consciousness and that, that awareness piece. And it's quite a mindful experience when you focus on your breathing. It kind of pulls you away from the distraction of the world around you a little bit and forces you to focus on nasal breathing more and being aware of your breath. And, and, and that has, you know, multiple benefits in terms of positivity and feel good, uh, as well as the actual the, 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 the biology of breathing. It's also you feel better because you've had a mindful experience or a mindful couple of minutes. And, and that in itself is really important. Yeah, I mean, it's all down to awareness. You, you hit the nail on the head. Um, everything is awareness, uh, being aware of how you're feeling and, and getting better at feeling and um, the awareness of, oh, I'm feeling stressed today or the awareness of I, um, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit of lack of energy or the awareness of you feeling um, 
like you want to change something. And that's what happens with awareness. It gives us a choice. When we have awareness of something, we then we then sat with information and we can make a positive change. So if that's a change, a change to be more mindful or to slow things down or to ramp things up if we're needing a bit of a boost. Um, but it all comes down to awareness. And that's really what I try to teach most people. And if that's um, helping someone improve their performance, it's awareness of where their performance is lacking and, and fine tuning it. So it's, it's often detective work. And that happens whether it's um, a respiratory issue or even somebody working through long COVID who are, who are trying to rehabilitate their breathing. It comes down to this, this word awareness and understanding that we, we need to have a positive change. And, and that can happen in many, many different ways once we're aware of it. Stuart, your new book, Breathe In, Breathe Out, is available now. If people want to follow you online, where can they find you? Uh, yeah, all the usual channels. It's at BreathPod, um, Instagram I'm probably most active on. So it's at BreathPod on, on Instagram. Um, and we do daily live sessions there as well. And, and um, yeah, I do monthly sessions online and stuff as well too. So it's, there are lots of opportunities to get involved with what we're doing. Fantastic. Stuart, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. And the very best of luck with the new book. Folks, that's it for another episode of Real Health with me, Carl Henry, in association with Leia Healthcare. You know where we are. Real Health at independent.ie. Don't forget to follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts from. We'll see you next week for more Real Health. So long ago. Leia Healthcare, looking after you always. Proud sponsors of Real Health with Carl Henry.